All right, so let's take a look at this FET generator, <coughs> FET generator lab. With pickup coil, in the lab I ask you, number one, what are all the possible ways you can move a magnet and a coil of wire to make electricity, in other words, to generate electric current? And as you can see, when everything is stationary, nothing happens. But when we move, when we move that magnet, we can see that we are getting electric current. We can see that in the way that the blue electrons are moving. We can see it in the fact that the light bulb was lighting up. We could also move the coil. The most important thing and uh, what, what we need to have happen is the magnetic field inside the solenoid has to be changing. When that magnetic field changes, it creates electric current. Uh, it's a well-known phenomenon in physics discovered a couple, a few centuries ago by a famous scientist called Michael Faraday. And truly, the world has never been the same since, because that gave us a way to produce electricity whenever we need it, without needing batteries, without needing chemicals. And there are tons of applications for this that we'll get to in just a moment. We can even move it on the outside. It's not as effective, but we are still seeing a change in the magnetic field inside that coil. If you go to the generator lab, you can also spin a generator, spin a magnet um, outside of a coil, and even so, we are still showing that the magnetic field is changing. If I show the field here, we can still see that the field is changing inside of the coil. How can we get more bang for our buck? How can we get more electricity being produced? One thing that we can do is we can increase the number of loops. And uh, in so doing, we are getting more electric current being produced. And um, by having two loops compared to one loop, we get twice as much current. With three loops compared to one loop, we get three times um, more current. That might be a little hard to see here. I guess we probably need to have some kind of way of measuring current. Um, and of course, current comes from voltage, so you can also use that voltmeter in there. There are other things that you can experiment with, changing the shape, the size of the loop. As we have a larger loop, is that affecting the voltage? You can try, try to take some, measure, some measurements on that. Um, and if we adjust the strength of the magnet, if we make it a weaker magnet, we can see that we are not getting as much electric current. So as I increase the strength of that magnet, it's a, the magnet is exerting greater force on the electrons. I asked you a question also, um, true or false? A magnet exerts a force on stationary electrons. And here we can see that that's not true. But if we move the electrons, let's go back to our pickup coil. Keep the stationary magnet, but we're going to move the electrons just by moving the wire that they're in. We can see that, indeed, we are inducing a force on the electrons. We're getting them to move, and that is electric current. It is making the light, making the light bulb light up. Um, so the one word that we could change to fix that sentence would be that a stationary magnet will exert a force on a moving electron or conversely a moving magnet will exert a force on a stationary electron as we see here as the magnet moves it exerts a force on these electrons you'll notice in all these cases that the electrons are just jiggling back and forth we call this alternating current or AC for short and it's true whether it's going through this way because first they go one way and then they go the other way one way, and then the other way. Maybe you've seen those flashlights, by the way, that you have to shake. What are you shaking inside? You can probably guess now that you're shaking a magnet. I have one of those in class. I'll show you tomorrow. Or with a generator, we can also see that as the generator magnet is turning, the electrons are going back and forth, back and forth. So when we think about what do we buy from the electric company, we learned last week that we are buying electric energy. Um, we're not even buying electrons because the electrons from uh, the wires on the street are not like flowing into our house. It's all the electrons that are already sitting on our house and the wires are just jiggling back and forth. Um, and this is in contrast to batteries which always produce direct current. The current flows from the positive end of the battery through the circuits, through the wires to the negative end. So the last question I asked you on that lab was, what are some practical uses for this? Well, number one, we can make electricity, uh, especially at power plants, where we use huge generators to produce huge amounts of voltage and current. 
But even little tiny things like this. Have you ever swiped a credit card or a debit card? What are you actually swiping? If you look at the back of that card, you'll see a black stripe. That black stripe is not black for a reason, not just to make it look black. It's black because it's actually magnetic. It has iron components built into the plastic, and that makes it magnetic. It contains a magnetic code. So, number one, we can use magnets to store information, which is a whole other topic. But we read that information by swiping it through the machine that has a coil of wire. And as you're doing that, you're making a current, electric current. That is a very small electric current, but it's just enough that it can, it can be sensed and read. Um, another use for this, I'll tell you on my bicycle, I have a little magnet on the wheel. And that magnet goes past a little sensor with every rotation of the wheel. And if my bike computer knows how big my wheel is, it can figure out how far am I going with each uh, revolution of the wheel. And so it can tell me, it can figure out my speed in miles per hour or whatever units I want. Uh, and what that magnet is swiping past is a solenoid, a coil of wire, like we see here. I'll give you another example. Some of you are into um, electric guitars and things like that. So if you're Griffin Steel, you are very familiar already with what a pickup coil is. In a pickup coil on the guitar, you have steel strings. An electric guitar has to have steel strings that contain iron. And so as those strings are vibrating, those strings are actually acting like magnets. And they are vibrating over an over a coil of wire that's on the neck of the guitar. And it induces just a small enough electric current um, that that current then goes to the amplifier, which increases, multiplies that electrical signal by thousands of times so that it becomes loud enough that you can hear it coming out. It's, it becomes loud, strong enough to drive a speaker, which then allows you to hear the sound. So those are just three examples. I can show you some more in class. Um, so take a look at the next video where we take a look at how we use this electromagnetic induction to make electric power at our power plants.